Helen Castillo Rodriguez was born on May 28, 1998, in the warm and tropical region of La Chorrera, in the province of Western Panama, located about 23 miles from the capital. Although there is little information about Helen's early life, it is known that she is the daughter of a woman named Sule Rodriguez Miranda, and only the last name Castillo is known about her father. Helen's childhood was spent among the busy streets of her hometown, where she developed a bright and energetic personality. She graduated from Dr. Armodio Arias Madrid High School in the same city where she grew up. Her mother, Sue Lai, was born on May 13, 1978. She reportedly has two daughters besides Helen, although this has not been confirmed by her or other family members. Helen was an ordinary girl of her generation who used social media to express her personality and connect with others. Her active and joyful postings reflected her love of life and her desire to share happy moments with others. Among her interests was the Mexican series, Como Dice El Dicho on Televisa, which she mentioned in her online profiles. At some point between 2018 and 2019, Helen's life changed dramatically when she met Oliver de Jesusa Delgado Gonzalez. A young man two years older than her, he also lived in La Carrera. Oliver, born on August 5, 1996, was studying at the Vocational Technical Institute in the same city. Their relationship grew quickly, and in 2019, they found out that they were expecting a child. The arrival of their first son, whom they named Luam, filled the house they shared with Sulai with joy. Despite the challenges they faced as young parents, Helen and Oliver tried to give their child the best. However, it is not known if they consummated their marriage. Over time, as Luam grew older, Helen established herself as a caring and devoted mother, always willing to do her best for her son's well-being. Her unconditional love for him was evident to all who knew her, and friends described her as a devoted mother. Oliver was portrayed on social media as a caring boyfriend who seemed to love Helen. He was always putting likes to all her posts and photos, leaving affectionate comments or emojis with hearts and smiley faces. It seemed perfectly normal for the young couple to use digital means to show that they were in a relationship. However, some people expressed the opinion that Oliver was showing signs of passive aggression towards Helen, and this opinion may have been true. As their relationship progressed, the young man began to exhibit violent and aggressive behavior towards his girlfriend. The situation became so complicated that Helen made the difficult decision to end things and separate from Oliver. However, Oliver's behavioral problems were not limited to their relationship. During this time, Oliver was working as a corporal in the Panamanian National Police. And in mid-2020, he found himself in a difficult situation after threatening to kill a sergeant first class from the Metro Police Squad. The incident led to his reprimand, after which he was suspended from his job and transferred to an administrative position. He also had his service weapon confiscated and was ordered to undergo psychological treatment, although details of his diagnosis were not disclosed. Despite the service problems, Oliver was able to convince Helen to return to him. According to the young woman's friends, she agreed to give him a chance so that her son would not grow up without a father. Thus, Oliver moved back in with Helen's mother. Shortly after the reconciliation, in early 2021, Helen discovered that she was pregnant again. Apparently, this news increased her desire to rebuild her relationship with Oliver, as she wanted to provide stability and a better future for her children. Helen's emotions from her new pregnancy were palpable. She believed that with the baby's arrival, her home would be filled with even more love. However, what no one expected was that this happiness and all of Helen's future plans would be taken away from her in the worst possible way. Despite Oliver's promises, his behavior continued to be disturbing. His actions, though cloaked in love and remorse, could not hide his dark and violent side that he could not leave behind. On Sunday, February 7th, around 3 a.m., for unknown reasons, a violent argument broke out between the couple in the street near their home. Suddenly, Oliver, in a fit of rage, lunged at Helen with a machete in his hands, ignoring the fact that their two-year-old son was in the house. The young pregnant woman's soul-wrenching screams echoed throughout the neighborhood as she desperately tried to defend herself from her partner's brutal attack. Sulai, Helen's mother, 
stepped between her daughter and son-in-law in a desperate attempt to stop him. However, her heroic action resulted in her falling victim to Oliver's brutality as well. The sounds of the struggle and cries for help interrupted the silence of the night and woke the neighbors. And the sudden silence that followed filled the atmosphere with an intolerable tension that pressed down on the Bella Esperanza community. Suspecting that something serious had happened, residents of the neighborhood immediately contacted the national police. Neighbors who ran out of their homes into the street saw Oliver, wearing bloody clothes, quickly flee the scene in his gray Toyota Corolla. In his haste to leave the neighborhood, he left the machete behind. Fortunately, police arrived on the scene within minutes. Senior Lieutenant Saul Cotto and Corporal Jeremy Samaniego cautiously entered the house, ready to confront any situation. What they found inside the house made them hold their breath. Helen and Sule were found lying on the floor in a pool of blood, indicating the brutality of the attack. The multiple and deep cuts on their bodies were heartbreaking evidence of the senseless violence they had been subjected to. Police officers quickly helped transport the victims to the Nicholas Solano Hospital, where Dr. Edwin Manfron and his medical staff rushed to give them the care they needed to save their lives. Helen's condition was critical, with 23 wounds all over her body, some affecting vital areas such as her neck, forehead, and arms. Her life literally hung in the balance. Despite the efforts of doctors, the young woman could not hold out and died from her wounds at 3.45 a.m. Sule managed to survive the horrific attack, but her injuries made her severely weakened. She was taken to St. Thomas Hospital, where she received constant medical attention for several days while she fought for life after suffering terrible effects from the attack. News of Helen's death and Sule's serious condition spread quickly. Friends, relatives, and neighbors of the family were plunged into deep grief and sorrow. While Helen and her mother were in the hospital, authorities began an intensive search for Oliver. Soon reports came in that his car had been seen on Kerosene Street in the La Pesa neighborhood, where Oliver's brother Vidal Delgado's house was located. The police were continuously searching for him to apprehend him as soon as possible. Upon receiving this valuable information, the officers acted swiftly. A large number of agents went to the address and surrounded Vidal's house, depriving the criminal of escape, blocking all exits. Oliver was trapped and finally decided to surrender to the authorities. The arrest occurred on Sunday, February 7, 2021, at approximately 5.35 a.m. Oliver was escorted to the La Correra police station where he was interrogated and prosecuted for his horrific crimes. Two days after the brutal attack, on Tuesday, February 9th, the arraignment hearing was held. For two long hours, Oliver listened in silence as he was charged with the most serious charges, feminicide in connection with Helen's death, as well as attempted feminicide and attempted murder of Sule. At the end of the session, the judge of the Criminal Investigation and Feminicide Division of the Regional Prosecutor's Office of the Ministry of Justice in Western Panama ordered Oliver's arrest for the duration of the investigation so that he would not flee from justice. The presence of Helen's friends at the hearing added additional emotions in the hall. As they left the courthouse, journalists approached them and the girls expressed their shock at what had happened and insisted that Oliver had no mental illness. They argued that the accused was fully aware of his actions and should be held accountable for his horrific actions. Helen's father was also present at the trial, but chose not to comment to the media. His quiet but pain-filled presence spoke for itself, reflecting the deep anguish that this tragedy has brought into his life and the lives of his family. At this time, the National Institute for Women became a key player in the case. Nellis Herrera, then CEO of the organization, spoke to the media to express her statements about the crime. In a firm and resolute tone, she stated that the crime was carefully planned by Oliver. Nellis explained how, despite psychological surveillance, the former policeman was able to manipulate Helen's family to come back into their lives and carry out his devious plan. The official emphasized the importance of working closely with the National Institute for Women, the Attorney General's Office and the National Police to ensure justice in Helen's case and to take measures to prevent similar tragedies. The trial that followed the tragic incident that occurred that early morning was long and complicated. The trial, originally scheduled for Wednesday, November 16, 2022, 
encountered some last-minute obstacles related to jury confirmation. Because of these difficulties, the Attorney General's office was forced to postpone the start of the trial until the following day. Finally, on November 17th, the long-awaited oral trial began and lasted two days. During this time, the chief homicide prosecutor played a key role by accurately listing all the forensic evidence and testimony relevant to the case. Every detail presented in front of the court helped to clarify the events that took place on February 7, 2021, at the victim's home. Finally, on Friday, November 18, 2022, after a long trial that lasted one year and nine months since the tragic death of Helen and the brutal attack on Sulai, judges Daniel Samaniego, Alina Uviedo, and Judith Vivero delivered their verdict. They concluded that Oliver Jesus Delgado Gonzalez, 26 years old, was guilty of the crimes of murder of a woman and attempted murder. The speed with which the jury reached this conclusion reflected the strength of the evidence presented by the prosecutor's office, which left little room for doubt. The verdict was announced on Monday, December 5th. It is a day that will be remembered by all who participated in the trial. Oliver was sentenced to 30 years in prison for the murder of Helen Castillo, and an additional 20 years for the attempted murder of his then mother-in-law. He was also given an additional sentence prohibiting him from possessing firearms for the next five years. Attorney Suki Yardi, who represented the victim's family, expressed satisfaction with the sentence imposed. She felt that the sentence was fair and commensurate with the severity of Oliver's crimes. February 7, 2021 was a grim day for Western Panama, when Helen became the first victim of femicide registered in the region that year. The tragedy hit residents even harder when, less than 24 hours later, a second case was reported in the region. A woman aged 53 was murdered by her partner in San Nicolas La Carrera. Data from the Attorney General's office revealed a frightening reality. For 2021, there were 22 cases of femicide and 15 attempted femicide cases nationwide. While the numbers decreased by 2023, experts say it is important to keep in mind that these statistics only reflect cases reported in this category, which is an underreporting. Such cases escalated during the COVID-19 pandemic. After her tragic and untimely death, Helen's memory remains in the hearts of all who knew her. Those close to her keep her memory in their hearts, remembering her lively and joyful spirit. The tragedy that cut short the life of a young woman and her future child, leaving her two-year-old son orphaned, is a sad reminder of the risks of gender-based violence and the need to strengthen measures to prevent it.